If you clicked on this video, you probably got yourself a new Sony mirrorless camera like the a7 III to shoot video with. And now you want to know which settings work best. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into it. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tom Streller, I'm a filmmaker and on this channel I cover everything filmmaking related. So if you're into this, make sure to subscribe to not miss any upcoming videos, I guarantee you won't regret it. So the first thing I would always recommend is to change your language to English. At least if you're capable of speaking at least a small amount of English. This will just make it so much easier for you to find out things about your new camera online, since most of the videos and tutorials are in English as this video. And this way you don't have to go back and forth to find out what they are actually talking about, which is just way more convenient. Next, you should set your camera to NTSC if you are not from the US. Most other countries have their camera set to palm mode by default, which means that you get 25 frames per second instead of 24 and 50 frames per second instead of 60. And even though this doesn't seem like such a big deal, 24 frames per second is simply set the most natural frame rate and since you probably will post your videos online and most of these online video services like YouTube are from the US, they actually prefer their videos to be uploaded in 24 frames per second. So again, this is just the most convenient way to go. NTSC and PAL standards are in general just a leftover from the good old television days when European TV stations tended to broadcast in PAL and the US broadcasted in NTSC. And since Sony lets you customize a lot of buttons and dials on your mirrorless camera, I recommend to set one custom mode to shooting in 24 frames per second as your regular shooting mode and the second mode to either 120 frames per second if you often use slow motion or for instance 4K if this is what you use more. This totally depends on what you prefer, but make sure to use those custom modes to get a quick access to your favorite settings. But now let's get into the picture profiles. Sony offers you a wide range of picture profiles and the variety can be pretty overwhelming at first. Because there are people who tell you you should definitely shoot in log, since this gives you the most dynamic range or that you should shoot in standard to use your footage straight out of camera. But I'm here to tell you to shoot in Cine 4 because this is just a good balance between a natural picture profile and log since it is a bit flatter to give you way more dynamic range but it's just super easy and fast to color grade and post. You can simply throw on some LUTs and are pretty much good to go without any further adjustments. But if you want you can really mess with the highlights and shadows since this picture profile gives you a lot of flexibility. After you now got your basic settings pretty much done, let's go into the more detailed camera settings. The most important thing is probably to set your exposure mode to manual. You definitely don't want your camera to make any automatic exposure adjustments since this can really mess up your shots because in auto exposure mode your camera will constantly adjust the exposure which will make your images look really unprofessional. Definitely set it to manual and try to adjust the exposure for every shot separately. Therefore you can make sure to have your exposure always on point. Speaking of manual you also need to set your white balance manually. Do never use auto white balance because nothing is harder to fix in post than a changing white balance throughout one shot. The easiest way is to set your white balance settings to one of the custom keys since this makes the whole process a lot easier and faster. And now that we have set these two important settings we can go into one of the most exciting parts of Sony mirrorless cameras which is the incredible autofocus. I highly recommend to set your autofocus properly and make use of it when you can. Because especially in the latest models like the Sony a7 III or the Sony a9, the autofocus is just ridiculously good. So I always choose continuous autofocus and then set my autofocus drive speed to normal and the track sensitivity to responsive because I feel like this gives you the most natural looking autofocus since it won't change the focus too easily and too fast. Also it's good to set the focus area to white and turn the face priority on to make sure the autofocus will always lock on people 
no matter where they are in the shot. I tried out different autofocus settings on different Sony cameras so far and found that these settings just work the best for shooting people, like for weddings, travel videos or anything similar. And in those situations a reliable autofocus is just really convenient to have. Besides that there are also some additional settings I want to show to you which are not as necessary as the above mentioned but are really helpful to me. For instance, I turn on the marker feature because I shoot a lot of my stuff to be edited with a letterbox later. So it's great to actually already see in camera which part will be visible in the end. You can choose between different aspect ratios, so this is a great feature to have in camera. You should also definitely turn on peaking. Set the level to high and choose a peaking color, preferably red, so that it is easily visible all the time. This is just really convenient for using manual focus. And last but not least, definitely make sure to turn off the audio signals. This actually goes without saying since it's just super annoying. So these are the settings I just found really helpful and important to keep in mind. If you have any additional settings I didn't mention in the video, just leave a comment below, make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more filmmaking related videos like this one and I hope to see you guys in the next video.